Um, Lord, we just thank you for the faith that you gave in us, Lord. That faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I just pray, God, that we would receive your word, God. That we would receive it as it is, Lord. That it would produce, Father, fruit, Lord. And that it would change lives, that it would change our lives, that we would walk out of this place different, God. I ask, God, that you would uh, use my life, God. And I pray you'd bless Praise Chapel, God. I pray that you'd bless uh, Higher Ground Ministries, God. Elevation Church, God. I pray that you would bless, Father God, the Calvary Chapels, the Victory Outreaches, Lord God. That you'd bless the Vineyard Churches, Lord God. I ask that you would bless all the churches, God, that surround us, God. That you'd bless the Harvest, God, and Greg mm-hmm. Glory, And, Father God, all the people that are proclaiming your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So the book of Romans chapter 10, um, verse 14 is where we left off. You guys can turn with me there. And, um, you know, the, the cool thing about having a Bible study and going a verse by verse study is you really get to understand the word of God. Mm-hmm. And it's a blessing, you know. Um, topical studies are a blessing too. But, you know, when you do the expository preaching and really break down the word, it'll help you grow as a believer. And so I pray that this study helps you grow. And so um, we just got done saying in verse 13, in Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so we talked about that. And then this is what he says in Romans 10, 14. You guys with me? And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And so what the Apostle Paul is saying is that it starts with faith. Okay, so salvation starts with faith. It's always going to be by faith. It's always going to be with faith. And so salvation has always been by faith, and it will always start with faith. Because the Bible says right here that, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So if you talk to someone that doesn't believe, then it's really difficult for them to become saved, right? I remember I had this teacher... And she was very hostile toward the gospel. How many guys know that for some reason, people that are educated, it, you know, Satan has really, um, has really um, come in the demonic realm mm-hmm. in our educational system. Mm-hmm. And the educational system in many ways is very hostile towards the gospel. So I had a teacher and she was very hostile towards the gospel. And I remember I would try to share and, and you know, I do things and she would just shut me out. I mean, I try to share in class. I mean, kind of outspoken in a way. She would shut me out. And I remember I just felt the spirit just speak to my heart and just say, you know what? The only way that you're going to show this lady who I am is the way that you live your life. There are some people who just choose not to believe. And, you know, there's times where we just need to live a life of a Christian. That we just need to show them by what we do and show them by the choices that we make. That we would show them our faith. The book of James says that I will show you my faith by what I do. Amen. And sometimes we just need to show people faith and show them that there's a God that's real. And we do need to have a place of faith. We read about Thomas when we went through um, the study of the book of East, uh, excuse me, during our Easter service, our resurrection service. And Thomas said, I won't believe unless I see his hands in his side and his hands in his feet. And there are people who refuse to believe, right? But I want you to remember that to some people, you are the only Jesus that they will ever see. To some family members, they are the only Jesus. You know, to my, my grandmother, my grandmother is the only Jesus that some of my, my cousins will ever see because they don't come from a home where they're taught about God, you know? So it, it comes by faith, right? You know, I know that I remember that because I come from a family of faith, and so I dated this girl, you know, and we had a Thanksgiving over at our house. And I was very much so a heathen, amen? I was very much so a, 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 a sinner. But I still, I still wanted to pray on Thanksgiving. And I remember that her household looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what do you mean pray? There are people who have no faith and do not believe in God. And to me, that was something foreign because I thought everybody believed in a God. You know, the crazy thing about the theory of evolution is that it is indeed a theory. But people hold to this theory to the point where they will bet their eternal souls on a theory that hasn't been proven. Amen? Sasquatch, right, the missing link, has never been found. 
Amen. Okay. And that's why they call it the theory of evolution. But yet science and yet our educational system will continue to hold to that it is true that we came from monkeys. Amen. It's just not true. And just the fact because the, uh, the creation has the ability to adapt to its environment to me even shows even more so that there is a creator, not that their evolution is true. And so it's amazing that what people put their faith in. But faith, you know, it starts by faith. So you can't call on somebody that you don't believe. It starts by faith. It really does. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. I remember there was a testimony of a lady, and she was a lesbian. And she was a lesbian for many years. And when she got saved, her testimony was really good. She said, I didn't get delivered from le lesbianism, whatever you want to call that. Mm -hmm. I didn't get delivered from being gay. Mm -hmm. She said, I got delivered from my unbelief. And then when she started believing in Jesus, of course, her life changed after mm -hmm. that. She's married and her life is different and she lives a different lifestyle. But it was her disbelief that caused her to live her life in sin. It was because of disbelief. Mm -hmm. And so it all starts by faith. Amen. It all starts by faith. Matter of fact, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says this. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. I might know that without faith in God, it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, mm -hmm. which means that they must believe that he is God. Mm -hmm. When you come to God, you must believe in your heart mm -hmm. that the Lord is God. And let me tell you, the Lord is God. Mm -hmm. And when you, you have that revelation, when mm -hmm. actually there's times in your life and you realize that the God of the Bible is actually the Lord, that all scripture is inspired by God, that is profitable for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. When you come to these conclusions, it's such a blessing for us to come to these conclusions. So it starts by faith. So they can't call on somebody who they don't believe, right? They can't. And you could beat someone up. You could, you, could, you could get them in a headlock, amen. You can beat them over the head with the Bible. But if they don't believe, then that's when you need to pray. That's when you need to pray that God will open their eyes, that they'll come to a place of faith, amen, that they would know the Lord. So how shall they call, call on him in whom they not believed? And then it goes on to say, and how shall the, they believe in whom they have not heard? Amen. So first off, how shall they call on him and if they don't believe? And then the second part is, how shall they believe in somebody who they never heard, who they don't know about? Like that family that I talked about, that girl that I dated, there was no God in that home. There was, I mean, there was no concept of God. I mean, it was just non-existent. It was weird to me. It was something I didn't understand. But yet there's home lives where there is no God. There is no belief in God. There, God is non-existent, right? And, and you know, we, people need to hear the gospel. I'm going to tell you, people need to hear the gospel in America. People need to hear the gospel in your workplace. People need to hear the gospel in your grocery store. People need to hear the gospel wherever you go. They do. And I don't want you to believe a lie that people have heard it before, that they don't need to hear it. Okay? They need to hear it. They need to hear the good news of the gospel. I don't want you to think that, you know, everybody is, uh, you know, just at the point where they don't want to hear it. You know, when you hear the testimony of Pastor Greg Laurie, who fills up the Anaheim Stadium every, every year and goes worldwide with his evangelism. When you hear his testimony, he says that, number one, he was a type of kid that was really tough because he came from a real broken home where his mom was uh, in and out of relationships and alcoholic and abusive stepdad and all kinds of yucky stuff. When you read his testimony, he says he was the kind of kid that you would not think wants to hear the gospel. But yet he, he said that when people shared with him that he wanted to hear about Jesus. You know, there was somebody that actually ministered to Pastor Greg Laurie. His name was Lonnie Frisbee. Mm -hmm. And Lonnie Frisbee was actually doing a Bible study, believe it or not, at all places, in the school, in the high school. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a blessing? Mm -hmm. And so because they were proclaiming the good news in the high school, people are being saved. Why do you think I go to the college? Amen? Why do you think that I'm there? I haven't seen any fruit from it. I've been there two times now. The second time, we are even more fruitful as far as being able to proclaim the good news. But you know why I go to the college? is because that's how people get saved. Mm -hmm. And people that are, that are hungry for the Lord. And, and you never know. 
And, you know, they've gave us an open door, so we're going to go back to the college. We're going to minister to these people in the college. Matter of fact, I'm going to try to do a Bible study at that college. That's what I feel led to do. I want you to pray for me. This is how people get saved. Okay? People need to hear the gospel. There was somebody who ministered to Billy Graham. Amen? Billy Graham was saved in 1934. How long ago was that? Amen? And, and he was saved in a series of revival meetings. This guy named, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he was led by an evangelist named, named Mordecai Ham. Mordecai Ham actually led Billy Graham to the Lord. Did Billy Graham need to hear the gospel? Yes. Do people need to hear the gospel? Yes. Do people need to be saved? Yes. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And so I don't want you to believe the lie that people don't need to hear or that you just need to be silent or that you just need to just live your life. Sometimes that's all you can do because people can't hear. But there's other times where people are going to be very receptive to the Lord. And I want to encourage you to share the good news. I remember one time uh, in my life, I remember I was uh, going door to door, inviting people to church and I was very discouraged because no one was feeling it that day. You know, you want to come to church? No. You want to come to church? Shut the door on your face, you know? You want to come to church? You know, they're going to sick their dog on you, whatever it may be. I mean, no, no, one, no, no, one, no one is happy that you're there. And so, and so I, I go to this one house, and by this time I'm discouraged. I'm a little bit frustrated. You know, no one seems receptive. I've gone door to door for a while. I'm tired. It's hot outside. And so I go to this house and I give this robotic spill to this, this lady. And she answers the door and I tell her, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. He cares about you. He died for you. Hey, you want to invite you to come to my church. And if you need prayer for anything, please let me know. And I kid you not, this lady, she takes the flyer and she has big tears, huge in her eyes. And she says, thank you so much. And she shuts the door. So you don't know the people who need to hear about God that you don't know. There's going to be a lot of people that are rejected, yes. But there's people who need to hear the good news of the gospel. Amen? Amen. When I first started a church, you know, I was sent out in the city of Fontana. And, you know, when I started a church, um, when I called to the ministry, I was associate pastor at my pastor's church. And I was pretty comfortable there. I would preach quite often. My pastor, he does a lot of evangelist work. And so I had a good platform to preach to. And I also was leading worship. And um, we're not a big church, but I wasn't worried about how many people came. And, but yet I was, I was zealous and I wanted to start a church. And so I go to the city of Fontana. And so the very first person that I ever pastored, um, her name, I'm just going to remain nameless at this point. I don't know if she wants me to share her name. But um, she's the very first person that I pastored. And... Um, and she was at a park. And I seen her. And when I seen her, she had a really big scar on her neck. And the scar on her neck is because she was in an accident where they had to put the tube in her neck in order to feed her, I think. Oh in order for her to stay alive. Mm. Now, this, this, this young lady at this time had two daughters. And um, she was um, into prostitution. And she was not a street prostitute. She was a very civil prostitute. She worked a job. But then she had her men on the side and that's how she made ends meet and that's what she did she was at the park and she told me that she was on her way c c uh, considering even taking her life and she said that she was praying that god would show that he is real that god would reveal himself to her and she was praying god if you're real if you hear me Lord, if you hear me, she was praying. And by the grace of God, I went to that park that day and I invited her to church. Glory to God. Wow. And she became the first person that I pastored. She's actually now involved in ministry, which is a glory to God. She goes to water of life. She's married. She has a husband. And she's actually involved in ministry at their Celebrate Recovery at Water of Life in the city of Fontana. And it's, you know, it's such a blessing for me when I see how she's doing. And I'm saying this not to boast, but I'm saying this. If you think that people are not looking for God, if you think that God doesn't want to use your testimony or use your life, He will. I'm going to share another story with you. Is that okay? Amen. Lots of stories today. Amen. I have an ad out in Craigslist. This ad says, do you feel depressed? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel broken? There's hope in Jesus' name. Call Pastor Ryan. I've gotten phone calls from North Carolina. I've gotten phone calls from this one woman 
who tells me, she says, my husband just got up and left me. She says, she says, uh, 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 I have a children. I think their kid was like only two years old. Jesus. Wow. I'm telling you that people are, and you think that people wouldn't respond to an ad like that. Believe it or not, they will and they do. People are hurting and people are broken and people need to hear the good news. But how shall they hear, right? How shall they hear if, if no one ever shares? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? How are people going to believe in our Jesus if we don't ever share the good news? Right? God was in the high schools. Do you know how that was an explosion in the 1960s? And that was a great thing because many people came to the Lord. Now we need God back in the high schools, do we not? Amen. We need God back in the colleges. We need God back in things. And let me tell you, this is how God reaches people. Glory to God. How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? People need to hear. And the last story I want to share with you, not the last this message, but the last story of somebody who shared the good news was in my life. I, at the time, I was 21 years old. I was, uh, got arrested. I got arrested because my friend got in a fight. And, uh, you know, he was getting beat up. So I decided to pull out a plastic chair. And uh, I didn't hurt the guy too bad. But I kind of used that chair to let him know, you better get off my friend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, their, their family called the cops on us. And that's the way that we lived our life. And violence was part of my life. And um, so we ran away. I remember we ran as fast as we can right to our house. Isn't that the worst place to go, you know? <laughs> First place the cops are going to come. So we run all the way to the house, you know, and I'm hiding in the bathtub, you know. And at that point, I, you know, I start becoming religious again, you know, praying to the Lord. Oh, Lord, don't let me get in trouble again. Don't let me get caught. You know, if you could get me out of this, I'm going to change forever, you know. And, you know, all these things and such. And, of course, you know, they find me um, in the city of Highland and the, and the police come and pick me me up and they take me to county jail but there was a police officer who shares something i will never forget we're going to call him evangelist police officer evangelist amen amen and so this police officer he asked me on my way to county jail he asked me let me ask you a question he says do you believe in god now i'm thinking in my mind what is wrong with this what do you mean do i i'm on my way to county jail for something that I did, what on earth would even possess you to ask me if I believed in God? And I knew at that moment that it was a God moment, that it was God's intervention in my life. And so because of my heart and heart, my disbelief, even though I knew it was God, I said, why do you ask me that? Because I did believe in God. See, he didn't know that I was backslidden. He didn't know that I was in a Christian home called Teen Challenge for nine months. He didn't know that I was actually baptized prior to that. He didn't know that I was walking with the Lord and fell away and walking with the Lord and fell away. And he didn't know about any of my struggles, see. But he asked me that question. And when he asked me that question, I said, why do you ask me that? And he says, well, he says, you seem like you're a good kid. He says, you seem like you come from a good home life. And he says, I'm going to tell you something. And he's telling me something that I will never forget. He said, you need to have faith that God could change your life. Mm. I needed to hear that. I didn't just need to hear that Jesus loved me. I needed to hear that my life could change because I didn't believe that my life could change. At that point in my life, I believed a lie that I would either be in an institution or I would be incarcerated or I would be dead or I would be uh, uh, on drugs. Mm. That was the only future that I seen. I didn't yep. see a future past that lifestyle. But thank the Lord mm -hmm. for that police officer, the evangelist police mm -hmm. officer. He said, you need to have faith that God could change your life. I walked mm -hmm. in that county jail that day. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I walked in, I fell on my face and on my knees because I knew it was God. I said, God, I said, if you could take my life and change it, I will be a miracle. But you've got to give me the strength to overcome the drugs and the temptation that keeps coming my way. And glory to God, that was 17 years ago. Woo! Glory to God. And I thank the Lord. How many more thank people you, did that police officer 
speak to how many more people that police officer he wasn't supposed to do that that wasn't part of his job description he was not supposed to be an evangelist he had a partner i don't know if his partner was a christian or not all i know this is that that police officer that day spoke into my life and i needed to hear that and i want to encourage you that the people need to hear the good news of the gospel and don't think that they don't because they do Thank the Lord for that police officer evangelist. I'll never be able to thank him in heaven. But when he gets to heaven, he will see Susan. When he gets to heaven, he will see Timothy. Timothy's another gang member that I got a chance to, to lead to the Lord. When he gets to heaven, he will see the people. Even though we may not have a big church, he will see the people that I witness to. And he will see them. And the Lord will remind him on that day that he was faithful to doing whatever God has called him to do. See, we need to share the good news. How shall they hear without a preacher? Amen? So I want to encourage you that we need to share and then God wants to use your life. You don't have to be a pastor. You can be a police officer. Amen. You could be a technician. You could be who, whatever it is that you be. But just be open to the Holy Spirit. I had a co-worker that I seen. I haven't seen him. He was an old co-worker. And we went to a training on, on a Thursday. And I seen him. I haven't seen him for probably about six years or maybe less than that. And, um, and, and I seen him. And, and he said, how's it going? We talked for a little bit. I walked away. Immediately when I walked away, I felt in my heart, you need to pray for this guy. You need to pray for this guy. You need to pray for this. I walked to my car. I turned around. I said, hey, brother, come here. I said, is it okay if I pray for you? He said, yeah. Can you pray for me? I prayed for him right there. I didn't even know what it was. But it's what I felt in my heart to do. See, ministry is not just in the church, but ministry is in our lives. Ministry is every day. Ministry is your lifestyle and the people that you come in contact with. We are not just trying to build up an organization, but we are trying to build the kingdom of heaven. Ministry is everywhere. Amen? And I want you to understand that God went on high and gave gifts to men. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians. Are you guys with me? I hope I'm not boring you. Amen. 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 Good. Good. Enjoying it. Amen. Because Satan will lie to you. They don't want to hear that. No, they do. They need to hear it. In America, in the United States, people need to hear it. Young people need to hear it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, this is what it says. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So everybody is given a measure of grace, and also gifts were given, right? According to the measure of Christ's gifts, amen? Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Right? Gifts. He's given you gifts. He's given you abilities. He's Thank given you. you talents. Thank you. Now this he ascended, what does it mean? That he also first he descended into the lower parts of the earth. And he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And let me tell you, everybody's calling is different. You know, everybody, not everybody's going to pastor a church of 10,000. Remember when God entrusted the servants with the talents, not everybody got the same amount of talents, but nevertheless, he gave them something that they needed to be faithful with, right? Mm -hmm. I heard someone say a story of a pastor, and, and, and God told him, you preach to the stadium. You go to the stadium and you preach. So he goes and he rents out the stadium. He goes and, 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 he, and, he, and he spends his money and he does all these things. And he rents out the, he gets these flyers, he invites everybody, he reaches out, guess what? No one comes. Nobody comes. Not even one person. And so the Lord still speaks to his heart and he says, you preach. You preach to the nations. You preach like you're preaching no other message. And so the guy is just obedient to the Lord and he just begins to preach. He preaches to nobody, no one that's there. And he begins to preach his heart out and calls an altar call and a message. And you know what? At the end, there's a janitor that's there that's working. And he comes to the pastor and he says, you know what? He says, I received Jesus because of your message. See, it was all for just that one person. See, God has given gifts to men. 
and He's called you. And even if it's for that one person, glory to God. If it's for that two, or it's for that three, or it's for that four, glory to God. It is for your children. It is for the people around you. And He Himself, verse 11, gave some to be apostles. Amen? Some to be prophets. Some to be evangelists. You know, in many ways, this ministry, the heartbeat of this ministry is to do the work of an evangelist. In many ways, that's why you see a lot of people that will come and go because we get a chance to plant that seed and that's okay. They'll be the ones that'll stay too. But you know, we also do the work of an evangelist and some pastors and some teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the editing of the body of Christ. Amen. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So I want you to understand that God has given all of you gifts. He's given us all purpose and given us all reason. And let me tell you, we need to hear, we need to hear, people need to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They need to hear Amen. it at your workplace. Amen. Amen. You need to hear it. The devil wants to shut you up. The devil wants to keep you silent. The devil wants to say, you know what? You don't need, they don't need to hear it. They do. You need to hear it. Amen. And how shall they believe, back to Romans chapter 10, verse 14. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. How many guys know that we need preachers? Amen. Thank the Lord for preachers. We need people. We need pastors. Amen. You need, there's all kinds of different pastors. There's all kinds of different preachers. How shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. Can I get a preacher up in the house? Amen. Amen. Oh, man, you guys are all preachers. Charlie, man. Charlie's Amen. like a preacher, man. You have a gift, beloved. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that. I don't know if they acknowledge that in the church. But I want to acknowledge when you're up here, you are preaching, beloved. It's a calling on your life. Yes. For real. My dad, glory Amen. to God, he's got a calling. Remember my dad one time, he came in and visited me behind a, a cell in, in, in the county jail. And, and he said, he said, I know what I'm supposed to do. He said, I'm supposed to preach. Glory to God. Pastor Jeff, you know, what well, awesome zeal for the Lord to, to minister to God. See, we all have different callings. And God is going to fulfill those callings. And these things are in your heart. I remember when I used to go to, um, we used to clean churches when I was in a residential program at Teen Challenge. And I used to go behind the pulpit. There was no one there because we're cleaning the church. And I go behind the pulpit and I act like I'm preaching. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea what I was saying. But it was just something that God has put in my heart to do. Amen. You know? And so they need, how, how shall they preach? Or how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. We need a preacher. We need someone who's going to proclaim the good news. We need Billy Graham. We need Greg Laurie. We need pastors, we need evangelists, we need people who are going to preach the good news of the gospel. And this is what it says. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Amen. You know, it's such a blessing. I used to minister to a, a lot of the mentally ill. And let me tell you, with the mentally ill, you've got a lot of demonic powers. And I used to look at them and I used to tell them, I've been sent by the Lord. I used to tell them that. You know, and it would shut them up really quick. i tell them, I've been sent by God. And, you know, and, 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 and unless we're sent, you know, we need to be sent. We need to send preachers out. How shall they preach unless they are sent? Glory to God, you know. Amen. And the sending of preachers are a blessing, you know. I'm going to take, with you, take, take you to the book of Acts, chapter 13. And we're almost done. You guys with me? Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 13. So we need to acknowledge the gifts in the church. Amen? Because when you talk about the sending, the church is the one who does the sending. Amen? That's a blessing. Because the church acknowledges the gifts that people have. Now, it's not man. I remember when I was made associate pastor, and this pastor, he preached over me, and he told me he's something I'll never forget. He said, Ryan, I want you to remember it is not man that has called you. He said, it is the, it is the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And he said, the church is the one that is confirming the calling. Man, thank the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been sent by God. We have a mission. Amen? We have Amen. a mission. This ministry is twofold. Either... We're the broken, and we are. The broken and the hurting that need healing. And we're also going to reach the broken and the hurting 
that need healing. Mm. Amen? Amen? That's the vision of this ministry. To preach good news to the poor. Not just to the physically poor, but to the spiritually poor. Just Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For those who are bankrupt. For those who don't have hope. who Those who have no joy in their lives. Those are the ones that God has called us to. All the things that you've been through. Your past and all the situations. Is because you're part of this ministry too. That this is our vision. It's not just my vision. It's the Lord's vision. Amen. That the Lord has sent us to preach Good news to the poor. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. But in the book of Acts chapter 13, this is what it says. Now in the church there was at Antioch. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had brought up with Herod the, the patriarch and Saul. And as they ministered by the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Amen. It was the Holy Spirit that spoke to the church. And the Holy Spirit said, These people right here we're going to send out. There was a purpose and a reason. Amen. I'm so glad. Like I said, you know, it's been harder since I've been sent out. I had it easier at my pastor's church. I, I, I had people all the time. I wasn't worried about how many people came. I wasn't worried about bills or worried about if our rent was paid and all the things that you worry about as a pastor. And, 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 and everything was, was, was a lot easier. But nevertheless, I was sent with the purpose to reach people with the gospel. And I'm not going to stop that purpose. Amen. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to faint. I'm not going to grow weary. Amen. While doing good. We've seen the people Amen. come. We've seen the little bit of seed that's been planted. And it's sprouting up just a little bit. We're going to keep seeing it. Trust, beloved, that God is faithful. He wants to reach people with the good news. Amen. Amen. And this is what he said. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called. And then having fasted and prayed, laid hands on them, and they were sent away. So were they sent? Amen. They were sent away. Amen. It's important. You know, let me tell you something. There's no church that should ever exist apart from the church. Okay, that's really important. So when it says that they're sent away, it doesn't mean that they were exiled from the church. Because you have some people that are isolated, that have their own ministries, that are isolated from the church, and it's not healthy. Okay, we are to be connected to the church, okay? So when they're sent away, remember the church sent them, the Holy Spirit sent them, they laid hands on them, they recognized their calling, they sent them the way, but they were connected to the church. It's okay to have an independent yes. ministry. You say, well, what's an independent ministry? Independent ministry is a Calvary Chapel, it's a, it's a vineyard, it's a victory outreach, it's a praise chapel, it's it's. All these churches that we know that have different names, they are what we call independent ministries, okay? They are. And what I mean by independent ministry, it means that they have the ability to ordain. It means that they, they, they are recognized by the state. And believe it or not, in our little ministry, we are an independent ministry as well. Which means I have the right to marry and I have the right to ordain and all these things because we are recognized as an independent ministry. But let me tell you, we are not independent from the church. Do you understand? We are together with the church. I have a pastor. We are plugged into a church. There is some accountability here. We are staying connected to the church. And it's important that we stay connected to the church. Amen. Amen? And I just say telling you that because it's important that we remember that. Right? So when you were sent out, you don't want to be sent out by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. I can't do this ministry by myself. I can't. God has a calling for all of us. And so being sent out by the Holy Spirit in, in Acts 13, verse 4, they went down to Cilicia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they also had John as their assistant. So John was there. Was the church supporting them? Yes. And they were sent out. Thank the Lord. So I tell you all that going back to the book of Romans. Is because we need to have preachers. And how shall they preach if they're not heard? And how shall they uh, preach if they're not sent out? Amen. So thank the Lord that we need to recognize the callings of people in church. Amen. And ministry starts inside church, right? It starts Amen. inside church. Yes. When you have a church and there is a lack 
and a lack of love, a lack of something, it needs to start within the people and then it can overflow to the outside. Amen? Amen. That's important. And how shall he preach unless they are sent? Amen? Have you been sent by God? Amen. You've been sent by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Does the church validate people and their callings? Yes. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit speaks to people. They lay hands on them. They send them out. Thank the Lord for the people that are doing the work of God. Amen? Jesus sent them out two by two. And as, and, 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 and as it is written in Romans chapter 10, verse 15, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Isn't it beautiful? Let me tell you, it is beautiful to speak into someone's life that has no hope that there's a God that loves them. It's a beautiful thing to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people that are around you. It is a beautiful thing. How beautiful it is to preach the gospel to the poor, to the hurting, to the broken, to the lost. How beautiful it is to reach out to those who have nothing and let them know that there's a God that loves them. How beautiful it is to a child that grows up in a situation where their mom or their dad tell them that they are nothing and that no one loves them. How beautiful it is for you to speak into their lives and tell them that there's a God that loves them. How beautiful it is to go love the broken and the hurting and the lost. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. It is a gospel of peace. Amen? Amen. Doesn't mean it's always going to bring peace, but it's still a gospel of peace for the people who receive it. The people who don't receive it, it may be, they may be upset. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Who bring glad tidings of good things. Is the gospel good news? Yes. Amen. Do people need to hear good news? Yes. Yes. They do. Tell me some, I don't want to, you know, I turn on the news, it's all bad news, you know? I mean, it's all drama, you know? Yes. My goodness, I don't know if I'm watching ABC7 News or if I'm watching a drama show with all the stuff that's going oh my God. on. Yes. My yes. goodness, right? And so he's, he's actually quoting Isaiah 52, verse, verse 7. And it's a beautiful thing to preach the good news, okay? It's a fulfilling life. It's a blessed life. You want to have a blessed life? Share about your Jesus. You want to have a blessed life? Let the Lord use you. You don't have to go out of your way. You don't have to um, make it so difficult that it's something so unattainable. It's in your everyday life that God wants to use you. It's in by hearing the Holy Spirit and letting the Lord lead you and guide you. Amen. Amen. But they have not all, all, all obeyed the gospel... For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so he's quoting the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. And what he's saying is that they have not all obeyed the gospel. Okay, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because when you talk about a faith, there also is obedience that comes by faith. That's the, what the Apostle Paul is saying. Because when we have an obedience that comes by faith, it means that we believe the Word of God and what it says. The problem with the Jewish people at that time is a lot of them didn't believe what the Word of God said. They didn't believe in the report of the Lord. But faith comes by hearing. So people need to hear, right? Yes. We need to proclaim the good news, right? Amen. We need to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Shout it out to the rooftops, amen? Amen. Do I share my testimony with people? I only can hide it for so long. I just got a new job, glory to God. It's about $350 more a month, glory to God. And I got this new job and and you know and and you know and I just I'm just really give him my background, you know, my my background and and he looks at me, he says your background's like 17 years old, Brian. He doesn't even care about it, this guy. He's a doctor. He's looking at me like a, this background's 17 years old. I don't care. You know? But nevertheless, I share the good news of the gospel. I can't take it away. I have to share my testimony and share what God has done for me and share the things that God has done in my life. I have to keep reaching out to people and let them know that God loves them. We're going to remember the broken and the hurting and the lost. Amen. We're going to remember them. 
Amen. I don't want to get too preachy because my throat's been bothering me a little bit. I watched this movie. It's called um, Arctic. Have you guys seen it? It just came out. It's kind of a hard movie to watch. And it's a movie about this guy. And he um, is actually, um, his plane went down. He's in the middle of the Arctic, in the middle of nowhere. And so his plane went down. So there was a helicopter that came to rescue him. The problem is the helicopter crashes. There was two people in the helicopter. One of the person dies and the other person is alive. So now this guy, that, that the rescuer becomes the, the, the rescuee becomes the rescuer. So now this guy, he's trying to keep this person that tried to rescue him alive. And he realizes that she's really hurt. He realizes that she's going to die. And so what he has to do is he has to go across this great Arctic and he carries her um, through a sled. It's really a powerful movie, but it's very kind of emotional, gritty, I would say, watching this movie. And so he pulls her across this, this with this sled across this great, vast desert, ocean, Arctic. I mean, there's all these obstacles. He's pulling her up the mountain and, and then he's you know letting her go because he can't, he can't get her to the top of the mountain, and he's trying again, pulling her up on the mountain. I mean, he's just, you know, going through all this tremendous stuff, trying to save her life. And then there's a point where he, there's a point where he, he, he decides that he's going to leave her, that he cannot make it, pulling her and him. So he decides, I'm going to leave you. And so as he was deciding to leave her, and he was actually pulling the sled to leave her, she's still alive, by the way. And as he goes and he pulls the lever, he falls in this big hole. Because, you know, in the Arctic, um, you've got to be careful. I've actually seen a documentary because there, there's holes that you don't see because of snow. So he falls in this, this huge hole. And he falls in this hole and he knocks out. And then all of a sudden he wakes up. And he wakes up. His leg is, like, really hurt. And he wakes up and he barely gets out of this hole alive. <coughs> and he comes back. And, he, and, he, and, and, and when he gets out, he comes back to the girl that he was going to leave. And her eyes all of a sudden open. And he just begins to weep in this movie. And he says, I am so sorry. He says, I'm never going to leave you again. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because if it wasn't for him falling in that hole, he never would have been to a place where he was at repentance to save her life. He realized that his life was spared. And so now he was going back and he told her, I'm not going to leave you. And then as they continue to go through all these different struggles, like I said, it's emotional great movie to watch he's trying to save her life and his he kept telling her you're not alone you're not alone you're not alone and he would not leave her side finally there's a helicopter that comes and he pulls out the um the flare gun and he's screaming hey you know save us and the helicopter comes and goes away and even then he tells the girl you are not alone finally at the end of the movie you know, of course, the helicopter comes and they are saved, you know. But let me tell you something. We are not going to just let watch people die. We are going to let people know that you are not alone. We are going to reach out to people. We are going to love the unlovable. We are going to keep proclaiming the good news of the gospel and let people know because people need to know that we're not alone. And we need to let them know, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave. Amen? Amen. So, Thank the Lord how beautiful it is to preach the good news to the poor. Whatever that looks like. We do outreaches. We're going to do an outreach. I'm going to think it's going to be a Saturday. Our next outreach I'm going to try to do because my work schedule changed. And I think that it's good. And, and like I said, the few people that we've seen coming here, guess what? They were invited to come. We're going to do outreaches and we're going to keep inviting people. We're not going to stop. Amen. God is going to complete the work that he started in this ministry. But let me tell you, we're not going to leave. Amen? We're not going to give up on our calling and the gifts that God has given us. It's such a beautiful thing to preach the good news to the poor. Amen? Amen. Listen to this. Romans 10, 14, and we're going to end in this. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things.